I rinsed the honey. The uh, you see all the wax there. Uh, they're caught by the strainers. The, another reason the commercial honey might not taste as good as ours, or at least a reason, is that they have to heat their honey to get it to go through pipes where we just let it flow out and drop through a, a sieve. So this amount of honey now coming out is uh, after four more frames, so I've got just two to go. And while the honey is draining through these sieves, I can do the last two. So I keep draining as much as I can out of the tub, out of the extractor to fill the sieve. It's now full again. I've uh, traded buckets. That bucket here has about that much honey in it, so it's about a gallon in that one. I expect another gallon from this. So I keep draining it off. And now I'm about to disassemble the extractor to scrape out all the remaining honey on the inside. So the bolts are all apart on this, so I can remove the, the lid and put it aside. And the basket then can sit in the sink for a bit until I'm ready to clean it. And so here's the mess in here. It's uh, honey on the sides and wax. Get this out of here, put it in the sink. And then with a spatula, I'll go around and get all this honey and wax. Down, down, down. So I guess I've gotten it all. It's always one more lick, but my spatula drops a little bit every time I use it. It doesn't get everything. So this honey's draining. This honey is food grade here because it passed through the sieve. It's bu got bubbles on it, but a good uh, once you jar it, once you put it in bottles, you skim off the bubbles after a few days, and then it's ready for anybody. Honey is an unregulated food because honey is antibiotic. Nothing can grow in honey that's bad for you, so the government doesn't interfere with people like me bottling it very convenient, as long as there's nothing in it that would be uh, a contaminant. Like water will ruin honey. Water, uh, honey is very dry and it attracts water, so you must keep the lid on it. Uh, if water gets in honey, it'll cause it to rot, but you always keep lids on when you're processing, and when you have it at home, you keep your lid on it too. So this is the next morning. I've been making my coffee. Sweetheart's out of town, so I'm all alone here to make a mess. Uh, that's what the wax looks like when there's no more honey in it. And I see we've got more than a gallon here. Very nice. So maybe there's less than a gallon in this one. So two gallons. I'll show you later how to clean the extractor. So I'm going to tr turn my attention now to this uh, wax. Of course we melt wax as beekeepers, and so I save all this. this. These are really just the little cappings and such. So I'll put that in a little Tupperware and put it in the freezer. Wax is a, a food for a certain moth, wax moth of course, and uh, apparently like flour will have uh, worms if if it's kept in the warm area. Apparently you can't stop these wax moths from getting in wax. Apparently the eggs are already in here somewhere and so the only way to stop them is to freeze wax. If you try to save comb for the next season it will never survive unless it's in the freezer. And so I save this. We have an extra fridge out back that I use for honey, I mean for wax and such things, so that's where this will be. This is from a previous, maybe a different color of honey and comb. I keep uh, gathering wax until 
my freezer is full and then I do a, a rendering. So I'll clean this with hot hot water here. So now you can finally see the fine sieve. And I'll get the I'll get the wax out of there too. Mainly I'm view videoing all this to show what's involved with rendering honey. It takes a lot of time and so uh, I wish we could respect uh, and the beekeeper and not expect such a, such a low price for honey. So my sink is pretty handy here that the hose I have is long enough to reach out from the sink. So first I'll clean this lid where the frames might have touched as they went in, the tin. This basket is tough, it's very sharp. So if I touch it with my hands, I get cut. So this is good, so I'm just getting the water up before I put it in the sink. You recall this one? stand was in the bottom. It's so nice to come upon these tools months from now when I need them again and find that I clean them well. It's terrible to have to clean them again after months of sitting. But it's always good to do your dishes after your meal instead of waiting for the next time you need them. Stuff outside, of course, going outside with a hose would be another idea, but the hose is not hot water. So I think you really need hot water to clean, to clean this. So everything's all cleaned up. I wiped off the outside with paper towel. It's all set. I'm ready now to start bottling, which means I have to wash jars. Get ready for that whole business. So I've got some jars and lids washed. That should be enough. When you're just bottling from a bucket, you want to get them in glass as soon as possible because the plastic might give a little taste to the honey. So you want to get it out of the bucket as soon as you can. And so the bigger the jar, the better because the faster the bottling. Then later you can put it in smaller jars to give to your friends. So I've got the big one full and all the other pint jars are now washed. So, got this nifty little green thingy that allows honey to not drip on the edges of things. I find it too hard to use the bucket directly when I'm alone. If I have a partner, I can have someone wipe the bucket edge for me, but being alone, I'd rather fill this two or four cup container with honey from the bucket and I can wipe it all right by myself. back on the bucket. And get lids on the jars as soon as possible. As I say, the moisture of the air will get sucked into the honey. The honey is so dry. Another good reason to bottle it quickly is the honey is thicker and thinner in parts and the levels of the honey will make it unfair that the certain jars will be thinner and certain jars will be thicker. It's better to have all jars be about the same so you have a consistent product. The simplest tasks like this are so difficult to do without making a mess. 
so easy to drip on something. To get honey down the side of a jar or something. So easy. Nobody wants a brand new jar of honey to feel sticky. And yet it's the hardest thing to get a brand new jar to not be sticky. It's just a habit to rotate your tool. Honey will always flow if something is left still, but if it's moved, you can catch it. So in all the videos that you saw where I collected this honey, I didn't get a single sting. Beekeepers do get stung, and I do get stung when I'm working on a day the bees don't want me there, or if, I, if I'm clumsy and hurt somebody. Sure. But it's not common. Commercial keepers have to work on certain days because they have to make their money, but I can pick my day. If, if, if bees are in a bad mood, I can come back. It's probably the best thing to say for hobbyists is that you don't deal with angry, angry bees, which makes the whole thing so much nicer. So I've washed a couple little jars now for this last bit of honey. Even these little jars, these four ounces, are amazing for someone who's never had raw honey, wild honey. It's such a wonderful little gift. It almost pays to give everyone just four ounces because they are all so amazed by it and you can then spread it around a lot more. These pints, I don't think, only the, the, the most only your closest friend would deserve a 16 ounce gift. But there are those. I give them away all the time. But that was a good take. A big three liter jar. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very nice. Nice bunch of honey. One final task will be to clean the buckets and then clean the spatulas and the countertops and get everything labeled and then we skim the bubbles off later so that'll be the whole operation <laughs>